Captain Arthur Cortez of Cortez Outfitters. Um, here today doing a video about tying this new material I got, um, FRN, FNF Predator Worm, uh, company from the UK. Uh, one of the main sources of food is actually worms. So we have here, we have sandworms in the northeast, we have blood worms, we have ribbon worms. Um, all of these are used by bait fishermen. Uh, when I was growing up, that's all we kind of used. Um, and it's weird that we don't imitate more worms when we're trying to catch uh, striped bass. Um, especially ribbon worms. I remember when I was a kid, ribbon worms was the bait of choice if you get your hands on them. Pretty hard to get. Uh, pretty dirty work also trying to find them. Um, so here we're tying up some worms. Uh, we have chartreuse. Um, this one was tied with this material, and these other ones are tied with dubbing and braid. It's a, a different kind of worm. But today we're going to be showing how to uh, tie this one in particular. There's a little bead head on it. Um, the bead head is a black painted quarter black, and we're going to you're using the SL12S uh, Tua Gamagato hook. For the head, we use the Estaz Chenille regular, a little bling on the head, and um, and for the body, just chartreuse of this predator worm. Um, first time using this material, uh, looks pretty good. You could use it either by itself, right, to make it a little, little bit thinner, or what I did, I folded it and I twisted it. I'll show in the video on how how I tied it, this little tie to give it a little bit more body. Um, I think this color works well when you have a dark background, um, marshes and mud bottoms and stuff like that. I think the chartreuse really pops out really well and uh, spin guys, especially here in the northeast of New York, uh, where I learned and grew up fishing, the uh, chartreuse worm is killer. So um, taking, a, taking a page from their book, we're going to be tying stuff that's going to help the fly fishermen really uh, step up their game and start producing a lot of good fish. Um, especially in parts that are dark backgrounds, marshes, bays, back bays and stuff like that here that we find in, in New York City. Um, in my waters here in Jamaica Bay where I charter, um, we have a lot of little channels and dark marshes and salt marshes everywhere that this will really pop out. And it's pretty good also for sight fishing because you see a fish, cast at it, he vanishes in the bottom then this vanishes, then you know you got the fish on. That's how, uh, it's a cool look to see. Uh, a couple of my customers could uh, attest to that, and they've seen that and they like it. If you guys have any suggestions on flies you want me to tie, um, all the flies on my charters are tied by myself. Usually I tie a whole bunch over the winter, like now, then before each charter I'll tie a couple sp specific flies that I think are going to be worked a little bit better than what I have in the box. Um, that's just my thing. Uh, I can't, I'll tie the, the, what always works, the clousers and deceivers, but there's always that couple few flies that you like, yeah, they like the little three inch better, they like the six inch today, maybe we'll switch it up. And I think that's a little extra key that um, produces fish. Uh, always change it up is not always the same. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. Let's get to see this thing. And if you guys have any other flies you want to see or any other comments, I'll be doing more videos now. Uh, you guys want to see or talk about where we find fish, how to find fish, uh, what time of year, what technique, part of the water. Here in Jamaica Bay, we fish the marsh, the bay, and then we head out to the ocean in the fall for mostly when the striped bass in the ocean to fall. And then we also have uh, false albacore, bluefish also, that come in the fall. Uh, and big bluefish coming down in the spring with a little early run. Last year was very great. Hopefully this year we see another couple big gators come in again. But uh, yeah, well, let's get to it. All right guys, so um i going to tie the fly real quick. So we have two uh, tied up. Uh, put a base of thread. Kind of do that to all my flies. Make sure they got some kind of grip. Um, so these worm flies, they're pretty good. They're really not really used much. 
um, up here, mostly just bait fish imitation, but um, there's certain days for sure I think these really work well, especially before the bait fish shows up. These do pretty well. So you just tie on a couple wraps, don't worry about it being that pretty, because all this is going to get covered up by chenille, so tie it. And here's the uh, trick for this fly. Again, I didn't invent this technique or nothing. I looked up on YouTube and some guys are using it for bass, for freshwater. Um, and they call it like the bass worm or something like that. Um, I just thought it worked really well for, for stripers, especially that chartreuse bright color. So all you kind of do is just twist the, the material. And basically you twist it so hard that it wants to bind on itself. And that's how you get more body on the worm. So yeah, just take as many wraps as you can without losing, uh, letting go so that you don't lose the wraps. As far as thread goes, you could use, I have, I believe I have gel spun thread here, but I use for extreme for trout, and I use for my saltwater flies, but any saltwater thread is fine. Um, head in with some head cement or Sally Hardest knows what I use to seal up the wraps. It's pretty much good. So you kind of lay it over and then keep pulling it out and you would see just it twitches on its own and that's it. It creates its own body. Um, measure out the length you want. Usually I like between five and seven inches, but usually around five inches is pretty good. Too big, I feel like it's gonna follow too much, depending on your cast. Um, that's usually like the main culprit of why your flies follow up is your casting is a little off, too soon or too late on the on the forward cast. Again, don't worry about how pretty it looks for now, because this will be fixed and covered up. All right, so here I'm taking some wire uh, used for uh, tying up streamers. You could use mono. Um, you could use a like 20 pound test mono. This is just to help from preventing fouling up with the fly. Um, so tie on one side, then on the other, and it pretty much secures it. Since the um, material is braided on itself, you could kind of just slip this right in between them and just uh, torque on their wrapping should just hold it in place good enough. I like doing it this way because um, I'm putting lead eyes on this and the motion would vertical jigging type of fly because we're putting a little clouser head on it. So here we're taking the quarter black dumbbell eye. Tie it right on. Some people like tie it on first. So put it later. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as you get it nice and even and secure. Um, the good thing about gel spun thread is that you really could pull on the thing pretty hard and it doesn't really break that easy. It does break, trust me, like if you pull hard enough it will break it but it takes a lot. So uh, yeah, just make sure you secure that. Just keep going back and forth. Don't worry about it. it's pretty. This is all going to get covered up so it's a real simple, easy, quick fly. You could bang a couple of these out real quick. Um, and what we're trying to match more is a profile and color. It's going to have action, especially with a dumbbell eye. It's going, to, it's going to move pretty good in the water. But that profile, especially right before when the bait fish really start showing up. These bass are hungry, coming off a long winter, especially like locals. They're going to be eating little grass shrimp, worms, little crabs, or anything that comes out the mud. Um, so if you introduce this to a nice dark background, this is going to pop out pretty well. This little olive color uh, chenille. You could put pink. I have a couple in pink. You could put uh, black. Just anything. Or just straight up chartreuse. You put another chartreuse on it. Any color you want. I like little difference in color. I don't like being the exact same color. Um, this is pretty close. Um, I would like some pink or you just have different kinds for different days. You never know. So you wrap it, just pass over the eyes, go to forward. Tie it down, 
and basically you're, you're almost done. Yeah, certain days I feel like some the fish are not on the chase or they're not in the mood, they're very sluggish, cold day or pressure's off or something, something's up. Um, so some, some, sometimes the uh, bait fish imitations don't move too well or they're not into that. You can work this worm really slow. You can make this weightless too with no lead on it and you can really work it slow and you see it just flutter in the water and just wait for them to come up. Um, I like to work a lot of flies with a lot of pauses. So I'll strip a little bit and I'll wait and have the fly die. And a lot of times on that dying, sinking motion, they'll come up and pick it up if they're really on a slow slow pick day. Um, other days they'll come up and smash anything at any speed. But yeah, it's one of those one of those days that I guess tough. It's probably because they're sluggish and they don't want to move. They're in there cubby and uh, you gotta make them eat so that's pretty much it the fly is basically done the quick quick flies tie a bunch of these they come in about I believe like six or eight colors uh, this is chartreuse I have brenling and they had brown purple the purple one I might get uh, just because a nighttime fly will probably be good and that's it, it's ready to fish. Once that head to man is uh, cured and dry, that's it. Get out there and toss it. All right guys, that's the video of tying the worm. Um, if you have any questions, any, any comments, anything, just let me know. If you like it, uh, hit like on the video and subscribe. Um, any requests, comments, questions, anything that the next video should be about, let me know and we'll definitely get to that, alright? Thank you guys. Tight lines.